hello, hello, hello. And today we have June with us and uh, tell us a little bit about June, Pam. Well, first of all, I'm so excited to have the ever popular June Jenkins for um, our visit today on our thriving and diverse coffee chat. And um, first of all, ladies, would you please get your coffee mugs together, please? Let's let's say a, a nice cheers to each other. Cheers. And, um, June, we're just so excited to have you today. And we're just basically gonna jump right in. And we, there's been so much that's been going on here in Collin County, first of all. And we know that you have been uh, ferociously out there, just fast and furious. And the first thing that we wanna know is how in the world is June doing? <laughs> that's a very good question. Um, I'm doing, Okay, as well as can be expected. Like you said, it's a lot going on right now and just um, uh, just in prayer a lot. Um, I make sure that I take time to just stop and smell the roses as they say, um, um, you know, stay involved with church. The unique thing is, is that a lot of times, you know, well, not a lot of times, your first place that you go is you go to prayer and you seek out um, God for, for guidance and wisdom when dealing with all that we're dealing with right now. And then what makes this a very unique situation is that um, we've got COVID going on. So church is not your traditional church and you're That's being right. That's right. to across Zoom. And so that makes it difficult within all the other things that are going on. So just learning the way to worship and fellowship in a different kind of way and probably um, spending a lot of girlfriend time. I, um, I'll share this with you and it may be a little off script, but. Um, just about three Absolutely. weeks ago, I was able to, um, I have three best friends. I wouldn't say best friends because I don't like to single people out, but three other women who um, have been there, they're with me at all times. And we had all had our vaccination. So we went out and ventured and did um, a lunch together. So oh, that's wonderful. that was relaxing. And um, I was able to just kind of let my hair down and get away from it all and take a break from everything. And I think you have to do that in order to get refueled and re-energized to uh, do all the things that are needed. So uh, well, a lot awesome. of prayer and um, a lot of prayer, <laughs> a lot of prayer. Well, you know, June, um, you know, you, you are, you know, a catalyst for change and you are doing so much. And I know that it is an emotional toll and it has to take uh, one on you. And I don't know that others are necessarily thinking about that probably when they see you out and about. So it's so good to hear you say that you do have a support system, first of all, um, because you know we are human and we all need to have someone to lean on from time to time. And this, this has really been um, difficult times. This has been very different for us um, in Collin County per se. Um, based upon what we typically see here. So um, it is just wonderful to hear that uh, you do have some folks that are looking out for June um, as you do work here in this market. Um, we need your leadership and we are thankful for uh, uh, the leadership that you are extending to uh, those who have called upon you. So kudos to you for that. Um, also though, we'd like to know this, uh, today, um, now that you've kind of been here in this market, and, you know, going through 2020, um, you know, we've had the Black Lives Matter um, movement that's gone. Um, of course, you know, now we're in the, you know, kind of stop the um, Asian hate piece. And then just some of the things that have just been transpiring. What do you feel is really the state of Collin County right now? Well, I feel that the state of Collin County right now is cautionary. Um, cautionary. There are, ca yes, cautionary. Um, I think that there are some good things that happen within the county. Um, more recently, you might have seen where um, Chief Ed Drain just issued a um, statement policy where he is no longer doing a um, arrest of individuals with less than two ounces of marijuana. I think um, I did see that. I did yes, see that. So, yes, that is a and big one. The result of um, a couple of things. Um, first of all, we did what was called community conversations back last summer 
immediately okay. following the death of George Floyd. So um, with that, what we did is we looked at the racial profiling reports, the use of force reports of all the police departments across Collin County and what I call and what we call the big six. So mm -hmm. that's Allen, Frisco, Plano, McKinney, Wiley, and Prosper. Yep. And those are the big six cities there. And what we did is, is we looked at the records and use of force and um, the arrest records to see what type of racial profiling was occurring amongst the cities. And the city of Plano just recently issued their, their uh, report for all of 2020. And what they found and the question we had to Chief Drain last year was, when you look at the number of traffic stops mm -hmm. compared to the number of arrests, people of color tended to get 75% more arrests than um, um, whites. Really? And we questioned him as to why that was occurring. And he shared with us the fact that a lot of times when you are arrested that um, if there are outstanding warrants, then that required that that individual be arrested. So two Got things it. came out of that. Yeah, so two things mm -hmm. came out of that. One was a realization that a lot of the traffic stops involved marijuana, less than okay. two ounces. Okay. So Chief Brain recognized this and um, made a decision this a couple of weeks ago to okay. issue this um, policy statement. In addition, the other thing that came out of that though is an inspection initiative that we just launched in partnership with the Collin County District Attorney. And that is whereby uh, people with misdemeanor charges that fit within the guidelines that he has prescribed, we're going to have an expungement clinic, which means that they will go through a process, they will be assigned a pro bono attorney who wow. will help them present their case and then it will then go to the DA and the DA will expunge those record that expunge that um, violation from that individual's record. That speaks volumes um, because a lot of the arrests that have occurred have been for misdemeanor charges that um, a lot of times people just did not have the ability to um, pay. And um, to know that the district attorney has taken this on as an initiative is very near and dear to our hearts as the NAACP. So we're excited about that initiative and you can go out to the district attorney's website to number one, find out about the program, determine if you're eligible, and mm -hmm. number two, to um, volunteer if you're an attorney or you have a legal background and would like to volunteer your services. Amazing. So, wow, so what we just heard was, um, that's huge. Okay, so we just heard two major things here in Collin County. Number one, Chief Drain um, issued um, something huge um, in terms of reduction of stops, first of all. Um, number two, you just said the district attorney now is, uh, has an ex expungement program. So I don't know, ha have, have we ever had anything like that here um, to your understanding? To my understanding, no, and it has not been at this level. It, um, wow. Um, and we're working with the churches and with community organizations and um, everyone to get the word out that if you reside in Collin County and have um, charges that are in Collin County, that uh, please go out to the DA's website and um, complete the process so that you are able to get engaged with the program. So then we can truly say just, just on that brief piece right there, when we're looking at the state of Collin County, the needle has already, I mean, it's already been moved. And I guess um, when there are a lot of things that are going on, we do have to stop, pause for a second and, and see where the action is or where, where, where progress, I guess, is actually happening. Because I guess for a person like you, when there are a lot of things that are just consistently in motion and you've got a lot of, uh, lot of uh, initiatives on the ground, I don't know if it's hard to see you know, where you are in the moment and how many great mm -hmm. things are happening, but I, I, I definitely see that that is huge. So uh, kudos to you know, the efforts there. And so. I think as a small, oh, I'm sorry, I think as a small business owner, we know how these uh, records affect you and go with you the rest of your life. So this is, this is incredible and a wonderful opportunity for people who are being arrested. And that brings me to my question, June, for you mm -hmm. is um, I, I believe that we, we have some individual responsibility as a community to be engaged and to, uh, to, to seek out and participate in the change that we wanna see in Collin County. 
individually. But I also believe that as, as businesses, as business owners, um, and as nonprofits, you know, when we're a nonprofit, this is our board members, you know, this, the community, we've had so much negative um, press in Collin County about the way that young black men are being treated. And we feel this outrage, right, individually, of how can this happen to someone that is, that went to school with my child, that looks like my child, that doesn't look like my child, but I can recognize my child in them. Um, so we feel this outrage and I feel like it's hard sometimes for nonprofits and small businesses to say, I wanna say this is wrong and I'm not okay with it because these are my employees. These are my employers or my partners, um, but I don't wanna alienate people who might think this is a liberal agenda or I, I feel this is a nonpartisan issue. And my question to you is, what can people who look like me, who aren't black, but are being outraged at what they're seeing, do to participate either as individuals or as organizations? Um, thanks, Dorley, for the question. Um, let me start off by saying this when you, when you, when you um, first brought up some of the things you just said is probably one of the things about me personally is I hate the fact that we have become so political lies with everything that goes on. And mm -hmm. as we deal with issues and I come to the table, I always try to bring an attitude and an atmosphere of let's get the problem solved and let's take off our political blind blinders. And I think that that is, you know, when you work with politicians, it's, you know, they can only see, you know, Republican versus Democrat, but you know, we, we need to look at it as an issue, an issue that needs to be corrected. And my question always is, is do you think this is right? You know, and let's take off our political um, blinders. So when it comes to what we as a community can do, I say the number one thing is get engaged, get involved. Um, when I look at the things that are going on and you see the same handful of people out fighting for the cause and that's got to change and a lot of times we don't know what can we do how can we help maybe you're not the type of person that wants to go to a rally to um, bring attention and bring um, um, media attention to and focus to an issue that's going on so then I say to you um, you know go to the school board meeting when we look at the issue that happened with the 13 year old bullying incident Go to the school board meeting, listen to what's going on, get engaged, get involved. And then perhaps it's that, um, you know, so from that perspective, we've got an election coming up. So um, go out, look at the records of those individuals who are running for your school board. Pick the person that's going to best address the needs that you have. Call up the individuals that are running for office or send them an email, find out who they are and what they're about. So I think you have to get engaged in the process. A lot of times, a lot of people kick the bucket down the line. Um, there are also people that last year, our membership for the NAACP went up um, probably, we probably after May 25th, probably until the end of September, I would say, we probably got 90 to 100 members. And a lot of that we know and understand as a result of the George Floyd incident. So there was a, a, a passion to go out and to do something, but it doesn't end there. It, it only starts there. Um, I think you have to use your power. You have to use your sphere of influence to make a change. And like I said, it may be that your child plays on a team and looks different than you look. So imagine the pain and suffering that that individual is going through and figure out what is it that I can do with my, if I own a business, what is it that I can do? If I am on the PTA, what is it that I can do? But what is the one or two things that I can do in my sphere of influence to make a difference? And I think if we each all start doing what we each can individually do, then we can make a change. And that's even just what drove me to help with the creation and the, um, excuse me, the reactivation of the NAACP and, um, branch for Collin County. It was spawned off of the incident with the 14 year old pool incident in McKinney, Texas with the young, the young lady there. So that's what drew, I was like, you know what? I am not standing for that. Collin County is not about this. This is not right you know, and bringing attention to the fact that we needed some reform and we needed some 
um, insurance that we are doing the right thing to develop police officers and that they're being accountable for their actions. So that was the one thing that at that point in time, I knew that I could do is to bring in the NAACP and allow this organization to do what we are, are, are chartered and our mission is to do. So um, I say each person do what you can do in your sphere of influence. And if each of us just gave 10 to 30 minutes to helping out a cause outside of our day-to-day -day routine, we could make a tremendous impact on the community. Yeah, great so advice. So June, on that note, I mean, because First of all, you just said that you created or reestablished the NAACP, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if everybody um, that's watching is gonna know this, but June, 24 years as a consultant with your own company, CFJ mm -hmm. Legacy Group, 13 mm -hmm. years as the owner of the advertising specialty company, 17 years with electric data systems, Girl Boss 2020, <laughs> Active in a sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, yeah. National Sales Network, Junior League of Collin County. And my question is, when in the world, <laughs> when you're running a business and you're doing, you know, your volunteer and community efforts, how in the world are you keeping up with this whole NAACP piece? So, I mean, first of all, kudos to you. Yes. Um, and we know, or maybe some of those don't know that the NAACP is a volunteer position for you. So you are working out in the uh, community on behalf of others while you are effectively running your own business and company. So that is huge. Um, I don't know how you're doing it every day, but I guess you're finding some kind of way to keep it together there. So um, we do understand, uh, once again, when we talk about uh, those, those folks that came to uh, make sure that June is doing okay, we probably all need to make sure that we uh, wrap our arms around you and uh, uh, check on you every now and then as we do with each other. Um, there is one question, we're almost out of time here, uh, that I just wanna ask, okay. okay. Um, Can I just say this? I have, a, sure. I have a great team. So that's that's what makes it okay. easy. So great I just team. wanted to say that. <laughs> I'm the face, but there are a lot of hands that go into the picture. Because yeah, so. I was going to say, because it would be impossible. I mean, I'm looking at all of this and I'm thinking, how in the world can you do it? So one quick question. Um, I believe you mentioned before um, that you had a prepared to lead, ready to serve program you launched in 2019. Yes. And that was for the purpose of Blacks that wanted to run for school board or council. You just yes. mentioned it earlier and we're right in the midst of an election. Is that program, uh, or do you have any folks that have come out of that program that are running right now? That are running right now, we have a couple of individuals who have um, who are on the slate um, um, that are in the May elections for on the school board side. Okay. Um, we have worked to um, ensure that um, we have people throughout each of the cities in Collin County that are running for office, even if they did not necessarily go through our program. And we are in the process of launching our program again here in the summer. It'll be over the summer months. I think it's in June to court, um, to um, it, it, as a part of our Juneteenth efforts um, is how wow. we're going to, to, to launch them. And um, what is interesting is, is that LaShawn Ross and Angela um, Richardson Woods were the two individuals who helped out with our first time that we brought this program and discussed oh. together. And Angie Woods um, at that time had, um, she served on, I think she's on the, she was on the Community Development Corporation in McKinney. And okay. she now is serving out the term of a city councilman in McKinney. So she's a city councilwoman, the first, um, first African American woman sitting in that seat in the city wow. of McKinney. So, so they were the leaders for the and then actually someone who want, or actually someone who is serving. Yes, yes, that is outstanding. So when it gets ready to launch in June, um, can folks go to what is it NAACP.org to find out more? Collin County NAACP.org and. Uh, those will be placed out at, um, I believe it's going to be in our May time frame on our website. But if you just okay. follow us on Facebook at Colin C-O-N-A-A-C-P, we will have that information and we'll post it so that people can register and sign up to 
um, participate in the program. Well, that's excellent. Well, June, thank you so much for taking time to visit with us today over coffee. I know that I'm thrilled and I think that um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it away. Um, someone ha has a girl crush on you. Yeah. <laughs> I've always- Surely. June is doing that. And when uh, Pamela said, I think we can interview June. I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited that I could be here and just share a little bit of time. And, um, you know, there's a lot going on, but there's always, um, you know, anytime I can, can be of um, service to help get more people engaged and involved, I'm all about that. So, Dorley, I'm glad you had the girl crush on me to bring me in. And hopefully, we've said or done something today, or I've said or done something today that will inspire others to just take that stuff and I have that sign up, make it happen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank okay, you. Thank you.